Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShark.com and ElectronicLessons.com. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to put together our laser security system kit. Uh, it can also be used uh, to pick up on very quick changes in the light. Right now, I've got a laser pointed at the LDR on the circuit, the light dependent resistor. And it's, this circuit is very, very sensitive. I'm going to break the beam really, really fast using a screwdriver. And the alarm goes off until I press the button. Now on power on, if I turn it off and I turn it on again, again there's a laser pointing on the LDR right now. But if I turn the circuit on, the kit circuit on, uh, 7 to 9 volts and I press the button, first I line up the laser, now it's scanning. It's saying, okay, is there a change in light? A change in light? And a small signal, when I break the light, a small signal will couple to the analog to digital uh, port on the microcontroller and it'll detect that little uh, change, a little variant and the alarm will sound. Now let me just quickly break it one more time. Very sensitive. You press the button, turn it off, press it again, it's armed again. So it's a very easy kit to put together and we're going to put it together right now. This is what comes with the kit. You've got your custom PCB, a terminal block for your power rail, 78L05 5 volt regulator, a 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, two 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitors, a programmed PIC uh, 10F222, a DIP8 socket, a monetary switch, a piezo buzzer, 5 volts, two 10k ohm resistors, one 100k ohm resistor, or ohm resistor, and a light dependent resistor. So first of all, let's solder in our resistors. On the board, R4 is 10k, labeled, shouldn't be hard to see at your end. R1 is 10k, and R3 is 100k. R2 is our LDR. Now, none of these uh, resistors are uh, the, the, the resistors aren't polarized. You can place them in either way. It doesn't matter. Now the LDR, what I'd like to do is place it so that the leads are about a centimeter off the board. So you can actually move it around a little bit. So I'll solder those into place and I'll show you what I mean. Notice that I placed the LDR about two centimeters above the board. You don't have to do this. Customize your circuit the best, you know, as, as you see fit. I did this so that I could bend it out and, and maybe aim it forward or this way. And uh, yeah, so next we got the capacitors. C3 and C2 are, are right here and they're labeled 0.1U, which is 0.1 micro. They're ceramic, so they're not polarized. You can place them in either way. Just make sure you have good solder joints. Lastly, you've got your 10 microfarad ceramic or, uh, electrolytic capacitor. And that's placed in C1. Now, on the footprint there is a little plus sign on this upper pin and that's the indicator of the positive lead of the capacitor you'll notice that there's a short lead and a long lead of the capacitor the long lead is your positive and the short lead is your negative so place your long the longer lead in the lead with the plus sign beside it in this case it's the upper of the two holes solder that into place don't place it backwards or else you'll blow up your cap when you power it up not cool anyway those are easy components it's a relatively easy kit. We'll just do a couple more steps and then we'll test it. Kind of a large step, but easy. We got the terminal block, 78L05 regulator, the button, and the piezo buzzer. Let's start with the piezo buzzer. The piezo buzzer has a long lead and a short lead, similar to the electrolytic capacitor. The footprint is right here, and there is a positive symbol on one side, and that's an indicator of your of your longer lead. Make sure you place your longer lead in the hole with the positive with the plus sign beside it. Now that won't fit directly down to the board, but it'll allow you to put it in if, uh, and leave about a millimeter and a half, two millimeters between the bottom of the piezo and the board. From a bird's eye view, it's, it, it just won't. It's, it looks great, just won't be flush with the board. The button uh, is placed in the S1 hole or footprint, and it pops right in. There's really only one way to put it in. It pops right in. The terminal block. There is the screw terminal side. And then on the back there's just plastic. Make sure that when you place the terminal block in the terminal block slot that the 
screw terminals are facing outside. You don't want them facing the capacitor or else you're not going to be able to wire in your power supply pins. So lastly, you got your 78L05 and that goes into the IC1 slot. Now it's also labeled 78L05. You'll notice that there's a flat side of the footprint and a round side of the footprint. From a bird's eye view, there is a flat side of the 78L05 and a curved side. Make sure that you match the curved side of, uh, of the 78L05 to the curved side of the 78L05 footprint and the flat side of the 78L05 to the flat side of the uh, footprint or else your circuit won't work on power on. So solder those components into place. Good solder joints, no shorts, double check for that. Lastly, we'll do our, um, we'll do our socket and our IC and then we'll test it. Lastly, we're going to place our socket. The socket on the left hand side has a little notch and that's an indicator. From a bird's eye view, the uh, pic 10 f 222 uh, footprint labeled IC2 uh, has a notch on the left hand side as well. Make sure that when you place the socket in to the holes that the notch on the socket uh, matches the notch on the footprint. And when you place the IC into the socket, make sure that the notch is facing the left here because sure, uh, you want to be able to use the socket as reference. So very, very, very important. You turn that around, you turn your power on, you're going to fry the chip. So solder that into place and then we'll test it. I put 9 volts on the input, turned it on, and now what I'll do is I'll press the scan button. Now it's scanning, waiting for a, a change in, uh, in the lighting. You could use a laser or you could actually put it in front of a door, which is pretty sweet. As soon as the door swings open, Press the stop button, hold it down, now nothing happens, press it again, and it's in scan mode again. So you can use it as a close range proximity detector because any quick and sudden change of light and it will go off. Now that's not to say that if you have this outside and the sun goes down that it's going to go off. Uh, because it, it, that's happened usually, that, you know, that happens gradually. You can use it for laser or you can just use it as a close proximity uh, circuit. But either way, it is an alarm. It requires very little current when it's in, sta when it's in uh, standby mode and when in running mode. So again, right now, it's just scanning, waiting for, it's asking the LDR, hey, is there anything there? Is there anything there? Any change, any change, any change? Thousands of times a second. And then once it actually, a uh, quick change occurs, like right now, it says, okay, alarm, and then it'll wait for that button to be pressed. The alarm will continue to sound until that button uh, is depressed. So, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you purchased it, thank you very much for your business. It's available at engineeringshock.com and through our eBay store, electronicLessons.com. Have a great day, everyone.